Hi there, for 69 Witches, we are just uh, at Tavastia after the first show of 69 Eyes, 25 years of rock and roll. We are just talking to Kurt Amaka, creator of 69 Eyes comic book. So Kurt, tell us, uh, how did it start with the comic books? When did you meet Yuki for the first time and how did it start? Uh, met actually in Atlanta after a concert, maybe 2006, but that wasn't really what started it. Um, we, I was with a promotion company called Corrosion in New Orleans. Uh, this would have been about 2009, I think, and we booked the 69 Eyes for the uh, Back of Blood tour. And you know, I kind of hit it off and just kept talking after a while. And eventually he came and did the first iteration of what turned into the Fantasia Vampire Bowl in New Orleans, which is the yearly vampire event that he and I produce. And he came with a proposal. He just asked uh, if I had the company I was working for at the time. It was called Seraphemera. I have my own company now called Dark Dunes Press. Uh, Seraphemera put out the first two issues. My company put out the third one. And uh, he asked if we were interested in working on a 69 Eyes graphic novel. And so, of course, we said yes, being enormous fans of the band for many years. And you're now a friend of Yerke, so it was just, you know, I didn't even, I didn't even hesitate. I immediately called my publisher at the time and said, yeah, we've got to do this. And so, we did. Okay, just like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just I said, you knew I did comic. Actually, there's a, there's a slightly more com a complex answer is that um, I've been grading comics since 2008, I guess. I, I tried for a few years before that, but it was just sort of um, pissing around, writing scripts, not really seriously pursuing it. And then I finally got enough of a book together to be put out by Sarah Farmer in 2008. And Danny Filth from Cradle of Filth was kind of an early proponent, fan, whatever, of my work. And so, um, and obviously, Yerke and Danny know each other very well. And so, Yerke knew that Danny liked my books, and he was looking for somebody that was kind of in and around the rock and roll scene, who also did comics, and so it just kind of worked out. Okay. Um, you once asked on Twitter to check out the link with Dead Souls Resurrection Kickstarter. When we now enter the link, it said it's cancelled. What happened? It was cancelled because of scheduling, for one thing. Um, my artists had some family issues arise, some scheduling issues, conventions where we didn't feel like we had enough material ready for it, where the book was just not going to be able to be on production schedule. And so we're going to bring it back probably around Halloween. Uh, I've actually started using Twitter a lot more than Facebook and other social media platforms because unlike Facebook, which has an algorithm which dictates what people see, Twitter doesn't do that if you post it, people see it if they if they catch it in time, of course. So I found that uh, it's more effective for sales and networking for both the Cradle of Filth comic that came out later and the 69 Eyes book. So now I think both with this event, with the 25th anniversary concert that we're at, and with some other stuff I've got coming up in October, it's an opportunity to relaunch and reboot with more completed story pages, more music, um, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So it is going to be relaunched. It was just bad timing the first time. We were trying to, we were trying to beat San Diego Comic Con, and of course you have about a 30-day window because any any momentum we could have gained would have been drowned out by news of like movie sequels and that kind of thing. So it was purely a timing decision on my part, and I should have just waited till the end of Comic Con. I didn't. Um, we said that Douglas was caught up in a very hectic convention schedule of his own, including including being in San Diego for his other work. So we just said this is going to have to this is going to have to wait, you know. What about the song Yuki recorded? I think it was the House of the Rising Sun. Right. It's uh, he recorded a cover of what is actually a folk ballad called House of the Rising Sun, which the Animals very famously did. That's the version yeah. most people have heard. And uh, he recorded it with an industrial band from New Orleans that I know called Shrapnel which is uh, fronted by uh, Michael Gunn, who is a very good friend of mine. And we went into Mike's studio uh, a few years ago and recorded this thing. And we've just kind of had it in the can for um, a couple of years now, as I said, with the idea of release, finding an opportunity to release it. So we're going to use it for the Dead Soul soundtrack. That is uh, part of the incentive package. Uh, is there any new release date now? Or is it just uh, well somewhere? Well, the book will be the book will be done when it's done. Obviously, we have to set up a production schedule. But the idea is we'll probably launch the campaign right after Halloween or right around Halloween mm -hmm. um, because we have more opportunities to flyer, distribute samples. Douglas will have more opportunity to get edited on uh, the pages. Okay. 
the song also will be released then? It's gonna, yeah, the song is gonna be, it'll be released eventually during the campaign, probably, uh, or maybe after the campaign succeeds, we'll release it, but obviously we, we don't want to give it away too early. We uh, have it as an exclusive and hopefully get people excited about supporting the campaign through that, amongst the other, uh, the other incentives we'll have. Uh, concerning New Orleans and Fantasia Vampire Ball, <laughs> um, do you already have any plans for the next one, or is there maybe a chance that uh, Vampire Ball is going to be in Europe someday? Uh, Fantasia is probably going to have another iteration next year. I, I mean, it's sort of it's sort of your he and my's deal. It doesn't have any larger like corporate affiliation outside of me. We operate with the permission of HBO, but they are not directly involved with it. They just gave us sort of the uh, sort of the blessing to go ahead and do it. Um, so, if we decide to do, it, we will. My current tentative plan, and I don't like announcing things early, but I also don't like pretending to be really secretive about stuff. Is I've got a uh, vampire novel, which is a not a graphic novel, but an actual novel that is part way done, and I think I can, I'm going to target to have it done in time for Fantasia next year. I have a publisher lined up. Um, I'm almost done with the first draft of the book. And so, once, the, um, once that's done, if I can get it on schedule with a publisher to get it out in time for the uh, for the event, it would be sort of a, obviously we would have a band and Yerky would be there if one hopes, but that depends on his touring schedule, of course, too. Um, but the idea is to try to have a book ready in time for the uh, so kind, of a, kind of a release party, you know, have a ticket package where it's bundled in where people buy the book and the, you know, and a ticket to the show and then we'll have another kind of dark rock band or somebody with ties to either, you know, the goth scene or the vampire community or something like that. Or just somebody cool who happens to be you know, passing through the worlds. Because I, I think a lot of uh, European vampires are desperately waiting for Fantasia to come to Europe. Just telling you because there's a lot of interest, I can tell you. Yeah. Okay, so it's uh, your first time in Helsinki, you already told me. It is my first time. It's my first time in Helsinki, and it's actually my first time in Europe, believe it or not. Really? Your first time in Europe? Yeah. Completely? Yeah. I, um, I had, uh, I've had day jobs up until December of last year when I started working on writing and publishing full time. So I didn't really have the vacation time or the ability to go away for like a week and obviously you have to buttress any trip here with a day on either side for travel. It's about 14 hours total to fly here from, from New Orleans. Um, and so it was just never a matter of like taking a long weekend or something like that. I mean, I could do that for, uh, to go to, you know, Al Alabama or Texas or any of the other like kind of Gulf Coast stuff. Um, but, you know, just for the timing and opportunity, it just wasn't there. Like, I didn't have, like, in this case, we had the 25th anniversary concert, and the guys wanted me to, to DJ for them. I was obviously very happy to do Yerkes. Yerkes come to New Orleans so many times for my events that it was just absolutely time for me to repay the favor, and I was glad to do it, so. Did, did you uh, do any uh, sightseeing in Helsinki so far, or did you have no time for that? We, we went to the harbor for a little bit. Um, other than that, I checked out the uh, Helsinki Comics Festival earlier. Um, I went to um, there's a bar with uh, a Russian name, but I'm not going to try to pronounce on camera because I'll probably fuck it over. But uh, <laughs> uh, the the Finnish goth band Two Witches was playing, um, and uh, I I heard them on compilations, like Cleo Magic compilations and stuff over the years. So that was pretty exciting. I went and saw that, and then I went to. Uh, um, Bakari Bar or Bar Bakari, it was uh, the, the rock club yeah. down the street from my hotel and had, uh, had a great time. Uh, I think the Finn Night was there. It was a bunch of uh, kind of independent, uh, like local industrial bands playing. And yeah, I had, uh, I had a fun time. I he introduced me to the gin long drink, which I'd never had before. Um, so. So what did you think of the first show now? Did, did you see anything from the show? Or? Oh no, I did. I saw. I saw most of it. I was only. I was only there in the very beginning. I was only gone at the very beginning, at the very end. No, I think the guys are in great shape. Twenty-five years later, and they're still just. They're still in perfect form. They kind of. They kind of remind me every time. I've been I'm vastly jaded and disillusioned with dealing with the goth scene. Uh, after years of DJing and clubs and promoting shows and stuff like that. And they always kind of remind me why I like kind of 
gothic music and the, the imagery in the first place. It always sort of my, it kind of makes me feel feel young seeing when we're younger, uh, depending on what your definition of young is, because I just see them up there and they're in great form. They're all in black. The songs are all you know they hit on the sort of classic key themes. They manage to be kind of like a classic goth band without being cliche or like silly or cartoony. So. So by, by now they're, they're more or less already a cult gothic band. Huh. I don't you, know. You already can say that. I yeah, think. I think you can. I think that the reason why I think the reason why they, they are, have stuck around is contrary to the fact that they said they do embrace a lot of you know pretty typical goth themes. It's you know it's the crow, it's vampires, it's all it's all blood, sex, and death, and that's that's not new material, but. No, but they it still works. Do it, with, it, does, it does work for them. They do it with such reverence. And they also have such a great reverence for just traditional rock and roll, for the doors, for motorhead, guns and roses, whatever you want to I mean it's it's like watching it's like watching so many different rock movements and genres kind of culminate in this one band that puts put a gothic spin on it. So they're they're just they have just as much in common with the Ramones as they do with this is just mercy. And I think that that's really what sets them apart and keeps them from being a complete clone of you know of the Sisters of Mercy or I don't want to name names of bands that are like that, but those, you know, in the eighties and nineties, those kind of post sisters, uh, post mission bands were kind of a dime a dozen and they've always been better than that and I think the way they have done it is by being completely respectful to their rock roots outside of outside of the gothic genre of, you know, it's Motorhead, it's Again, Ramones. It's the Damned. It's just uh, you know, it's Danzig. It's, it's 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 all of that, and they still are you know inarguably a gothic rock band. And I love that because it just shows such a a knowledge and it's something that's tragically missing in a lot of the, the contemporary goth scene is new knowledge of music outside of like the outside of goth industrial and EVM. And, you know, they know their history and they respect it, and I respect that. For sure, they, they have many influences, but their own style, for sure. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, so we're waiting now for the second show to come, and then the after show party in Bakariba. Indeed. You will be there, I guess? Of course I will be. Yeah. Okay, so we have a whiskey then. We will, uh, we will uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully more than one, but hopefully not two. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I tried my first whiskey today, so be slowly. Yeah, okay. come to me for recommendations later. We'll look, yeah. <laughs> okay, so thank you a lot. Of for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Um, said uh, it's been great DJing here. Hopefully, we'll see you guys again at the second show. Sure. Cheers. Thank you. Mm -hmm.